In this video, we're going to talk about working with the depth of field blurring effects in Octane for Cinema 4D. And for this video, I'm using the Cantina.C4D scene. This one right here. So let's go to the bar cam, which is the camera that we're using to render the scene. And I'm going to go to Tags, C4D Octane Tags, Octane Camera Tag. And then under the Thin Lens Settings, I'm going to turn off Autofocus and start to increase the aperture. So increasing the aperture is going to start adding some of that depth of field blurring. So let's see how far. This is a fairly large scene, so it may take a little bit to get it to make it apparent. But now you can start to see it's looking a little fuzzy as it renders here. And then, of course, uh, if I set the autofocus, then Octane is going to determine what part of the scene should remain in focus. And just like if you worked with autofocus in the camera, a lot of times that might not be helpful if you're trying to do something very specific. So right now the back of the bar is in focus. If I turn on autofocus, it's going to pick the robot. So in that case, it did a pretty good job of picking what you what I wanted to be in focus, but it's always nice to have more of a fine level of control. So if I turn this off and then I can start to adjust the focal depth settings. So this determines what part is or where the focal plane is going to be, where that region of focus is going to be. And as you can see, numerically, it's a bit of a guessing game. It gets a little tiresome to try and constantly do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's set this really high. Let's set this to 800, just to make it really blurry. So I set it to a very high level because this is a large scene. And I want to pick the uh, region of focus interactively. I'll click on this F button here in the live viewer and then click say on the space helmet here and you can see it will adjust and set that focal depth for me. Of course, now the aperture is still really high. So let's bring it down to something a bit more reasonable. The aperture and f-stop are going to be affected by the overall size of your scene. So in some cases, this value might not need to be very high in other cases it's a, if it's a in other cases if it's a very large setting you'll have to probably bring it up quite a bit so and value of 800 works pretty well in the scene so you can see this stuff is blurred and these guys are kind of in focus so i've adjusted the view so it's a close-up on the helmet here on the bar just to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on with the bokeh settings. So bokeh refers to the kind of shape that you see in these blurred out regions, especially on the highlights within the scene. So right now I have a bokeh sound, side count of six, rotation of zero, and roundness of one. So let's adjust these settings and take a look at the effect. And I'm going to pause the render while it's calculating. So in this case, I've set the bokeh side count to three, uh, adjusted the rotation a little bit and lowered the bokeh roundness. And so you can see now the highlights look like little triangles because they're only three sided and they're not very round. So you can kind of custom design the look uh, of that sort of bokeh blurred confusion, area of confusion around the uh, parts that are out of focus. So let's take a look at the aperture edge setting and how it affects the render. So in this case, I've set the aperture aspect ratio back to one. I have a bokeh side count of five and I've lowered the bokeh roundness and the rotation. So you can sort of see the highlights like this one looks like a little, little bit of a pentagon here because it's five sided. Um, so let's uh, take a look. The aperture edge is at one. So let's raise this. I think the highest setting is three. So now we've just changed the aperture edge to three and you can see in the highlights here some of the differences, the way that they look, especially around the, the blurriness, the bokeh right here. So these are the things you want to pay attention to. The differences can be subtle, but they can also be very effective in creating sort of a, uh, a very nice moody photographic effect, uh, depending on what you're trying to go for. So if we set this in the middle here to two, let's take a look at how that looks. So you can see here is an aperture edge of two. You can see how it affects the highlights. Again, pretty subtle stuff, but uh, can be used for artistic effect. 